Hey, I'm Sarah. This is Abby, and welcome to A Swole Unlimited. If you're new here, I'm a scuba instructor, and I moved into my van in 2021 after losing my dive shop in Indonesia due to shutdowns. I've been on the road diving around the US, Canada, and Mexico for the last two years, teaching on YouTube along the way. Oh, hey, what you doing down there? I just wanna remind you that I have diving expeditions coming up. I have Mexico in December of this year, 2023, and Komodo in June of next year, 2024. So if you're interested in joining me and a group of really awesome people to dive in incredible places, check out the details on my website. I've linked it in the description below and in the pinned comments. Let's get to the video. The big dog. We. <laughs> Can you even see it? I've come to realize that you might be totally blind. Oh, it is bright. Cover this up. How's that? That was a little bit better. I probably don't need these actually. I woke up at five o'clock in the morning to drive two hours into Yellowstone National Park because I got invited to go scuba diving. Oh! Abby is not as excited as I am about it. Nikki from Teach Me to Dive reached out to me on Instagram because she saw that I was diving in Grand Teton. She had plans to dive today and said, hey, we have tanks. I wasn't gonna do Yellowstone, but we're doing it today. Pretty cool. I got up really early to make the drive so that I could avoid the Saturday traffic coming into the park. It's seven o'clock. We're not gonna dive until 10. One of my favorite things about van life is that I can drive somewhere and then like take a nap if I want. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Oh, I know, baby. Let's go outside. <sighs> this is unreal. There's this huge group of people going to dive the spires. Like, I can't even believe this. This is so freaking cool. Your shirt say do dangerous shit? Yeah. What is that from? <laughs> Black Mass Divers. Love yes. it. Oh yeah, you guys got the right got setup here. Well, this is Fantastic. Just part of we have more tanks of the trailer. <laughs> Lucy the dive dog. Hi, baby. Are you just a sweetheart? How old are you? Eight. Oh, what a sweetie. Ben and Nikki Hadfield are the husband and wife duo behind the Teach Me to Dive community. They are based in Idaho and regularly dive Yellowstone Lake. These two are incredibly passionate about teaching scuba diving, and I'm actually discussing the possibility of getting my ice diving training with them this winter. I've linked all their socials and an interview Ben and I did after our dives in Yellowstone in the description below. So what are we doing today? A dive along, this is something uh, Nikki and I have been working on for a long time. It was about seven years ago, I heard about the spires, and so we brought my boat out and uh, we decided to search the lake. Finding something that's about the size of a Buick um, in 136 square miles is pretty tricky because we didn't know even know where to start. I'd find somebody that had claimed to dive it and I'd find their pictures with like a bag on the beach. <laughs> and I'd, I'd be like, okay, now where's that at? Okay, I see the mountains in the background. And, and so I would use GPS and satellite imagery and I'm like, okay. And so I started narrowing it down to where I thought it was and I finally figured out it must be in Bridge Bay. But the cool thing is, is they're made out of silica and magnesium with an iron content. And the iron content um, actually has a magnetic property to it. Mm. So there's times where you won't, you'll be 40 feet or 50 feet or 60 feet away from it. And you won't be able to see it because the visibility is only 20 feet, but you'll feel the hair to back your neck stand it up. It's pretty cool. The best way we like to describe uh, the first time diving a spire is it's like walking through a graveyard at midnight. Um, it has this really reverent feel. It's amazing. You realize, wait a minute. We can't hoard this to ourselves, we gotta share. Yeah. So once a year, we put together uh, this dive along where you say, hey, who wants to come out and see the spires? Yellowstone Lake sits at 7,733 feet of elevation. The maximum depth is over 300 feet. 
It is the largest high elevation lake in North America, and therefore altitude diving training is a must, along with conservative dive planning and emergency equipment. It's awesome, I love it. <laughs> if you want to learn more about altitude diving, I'll link my video on Lake Tahoe in the description below. The lake completely freezes over in the winter and thaws in May or early June. Therefore, the water is normally cold and a dry suit is recommended. This is a relatively simple, shallow dive site, so open water divers are welcome. However, you should only attempt this dive if you have good buoyancy control. This is not only to protect the environment, but also because the bottom is very silty and one wrong move will completely mess up the visibility for everyone. The other consideration is the long surface swim. Assess your own comfort in your gear and fitness level before attempting a 20 minute surface swim. One of our divers got around this by taking their gear on a stand up paddleboard. It was pretty sweet. The bridge bay spires were discovered in the late 90s and range from five to 35 feet tall. These are essentially hollow pipes or chimneys consisting of silica thermophilic bacteria filaments and red and black iron oxide, which cause the varying coloration. The formations are thousands of years old and are incredible to take in. You're literally swimming through history. Aside from the spires, Bridge Bay is home to freshwater sponges, algae, bacteria, plants, and interesting little leeches. Hello. This morning, I'm doing another dive in Yellowstone National Park. I'm gonna be going in side mount today. It's gonna be my first time diving side mount with steel tanks, which I've heard is actually kind of nicer. So I'm excited to try that, but it means that I need to take bands off of my tanks. That's a whole process. <sighs> yeah. One. Bada bang, bada boom. Two. Nice Beautiful. thing is, is they'll stay the same trim throughout the entire dive. Yeah. It's a great tool. Uh, it's been awesome. I <laughs> can't believe I didn't, it took me a long, so long to get one. I've just been using lighters forever. What's the container, the gas? It, it's a, uh, you get a butane thing. Yeah. And you just literally, it's got a, a nipple on it and you just put it over top and fill it. Oh. That's it. And what's even better, if, if you ever have to do one of these, yeah. Um, what you do is you, you burn it and then you, you use the bottom of it and, yeah. and smack it. Yeah. And it's, it makes it nice and easy to web. Yeah. This is Mary Bay, a portion of Yellowstone National Lake. But there's two craters. We're going to go to the eastern portion of that, which is 90 to 100 feet. And there's very, very active portions of that bay. And so this has a warm, a cold, and then a warm below. We'll find a couple of holes in the ground that are literally this big. and. If you flash your flashlight down into them, you should be able to see 50 to 60 feet down. And what they are is they're active, just like Old Faithful. They are very active geysers underwater. We're so happy to be carrying heavy things. <laughs> Almost halfway there. Woo! Surface swims are so fun. They're the best. This dive is better suited for advanced divers, preferably experienced technical divers. 
The surface swim is no joke, at least 30 minutes swimming at a strong pace. And there's enough to see at depth that planning a deco dive is beneficial. The draw to this side of the bay is the geothermal activity. Small and large underwater geysers are located all around the bay. The white stains are evidence of this geothermal activity. These are mineral deposits of silica, calcium carbonate, and sulfur left behind from the mixing of the hot thermal water with the cool lake water. Here you can see the hot water coming up from a small geyser, mixing with the cold water, making a very distinct thermocline. Some of these geysers are very hot, up to 252 Fahrenheit. So don't stick your hand into the hot water vents. I only tried it after Ben, who is very familiar with this dive site and the different geysers, showed that it was safe. The hot water at depth leads to an interesting experience while diving, where you can find temperatures around 48 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit at even 70 to 90 feet, whereas normal temperatures at that depth in the lake would be low 40s or high 30s. This leads to a significant increase in biological life with different plants and algae thriving on this side of the lake, even at depth. Finally, this area is also known for its bubble fields. We didn't make it to the really active area, but Ben and Nikki have a great video on their YouTube channel showcasing the gas activity bustling beneath the bottom of the lake. This gas is usually made up of carbon dioxide, methane, and hydrogen sulfide. Yellowstone National Park is a fascinating place, which unfortunately suffers from a significant amount of bad press. There is a lot of misinformation out there about volcanic activity in this area, so if you want to take a deep dive into reliable sources, check out the U.S. Geological Survey website. I've linked it below with everything else. Right back to it. Hi. All right, on the road again.